Hi there, welcome to Create with Copper. These videos show you techniques and tutorials for making jewellery, so hit that subscribe button for more. Today I'll show you how to make this wire work pendant with a focal bead. Sometimes you find that special bead that deserves to be used on its own, like this fossil jasper. So I created this pendant to frame and celebrate the bead. To make this you need copper wire in 1mm and 0.4mm diameters which is 18 gauge and 26 gauge. And your focal bead, mine's 12mm in diameter, but you could use a slightly smaller or larger bead. And the tools you need are your basic set of pliers, so your flat nose or chain nose pliers, round nose pliers and wire cutters. And then optional tools you might want to use are a mandrel or your bale making pliers, a hammer and block, an awl and some liver of sulphur. For this pendant I need two pieces of the one millimetre wire about 20 centimetres long and I'm using two metres of the 0.4 millimetre wire. I'm going to start by weaving the bale. I want to start seven centimetres in on one of the one millimetre frame wires and leave a tail of about 30 centimetres of the weaving wire which is the 0.4 millimetre wire. And I'm just going to wrap that weaving wire two times around the frame wire. I'm then going to add my second frame wire and wrap two times around just that wire, finishing with my weaving wire coming up through the centre between the two wires. I want to shape my bale so the widest point is at the top, so I'm just going to move the wires outwards to create that shape and then I can start weaving the bale. I think I'll go twice around that bottom wire, twice around the top wire, and then I'm going to move to the weave that I'm going to do the rest of the bale in, which is three times around the bottom wire, and then up between the two wires, and three times around the top wire. I'll just keep pushing those wraps together to keep them neat. And then up between the two wires and three times around the bottom wire and I'll continue this for the rest of the bale. As I'm approaching the top of the bale I want to move those frame wires again so they're now parallel. At this point I've got just shy of a centimetre of weaving and then I'm just going to continue that three wraps on the bottom, through and across, and three wraps on the top. I'm going to do that for two sets of three on each of the wires, and then I'm going to reposition those wires again, to start narrowing the bale back down again, and then continue weaving the bale as before. One thing you just need to be a bit careful of at this point is making sure that the weave doesn't slip forwards down those wires and open out. Well, once we get to where the wires cross, I'll move them again so they're running parallel. And then just weave that last little bit of the bale. Just wrapping twice on each wire. And at this point you want the bale to be fairly symmetrical. And then we're going to shape that by just gently folding it over and bending it around. As you get a little bit closer together you're just going to need to move the wires out of the way. And then you can bend them so that they're out of the way. And you just want the ends of the weave to meet. Now you can do this fairly well by hand, but if you've got a mandrel or some baling pliers you can just fold it around that to make sure that the shape's nice and round. Now I just want to use those weaving wires to lock the two sides of the bale together. So I'll take the weaving wire that's at the back, just take it through the two frame wires, so it's in the middle. Then I'll take that front weaving wire around through to the middle of the bale 
and then through those two back wires around one of the wires at the back and then through back to the front of the bale. And then do the same with that back wire. Take it around one of the front wires and then back through to the back of the bale. Now we're ready to start shaping the top of the pendant. So I'm going to take those front two wires and move them out towards the right. And then the back two wires I'm going to move towards the left. With the lower of those front wires, they're the longer wires, I'm just going to make a small curve I like to start this by hand and then I can make adjustments with my small flat nose pliers. I'm then going to flip around to the back and take the lower of those back two wires and mirror that curve. Again using my pliers to help create that shape. I'm then going to flip back round to the front and taking that outside upper wire I'm going to curve that around to kind of mirror the other one but I want it to be wider apart in the centre of that curve. I'll just keep adjusting until I get to a shape that I like. And the those two wires should meet again around about where they cross that back wire. I'm now ready to start weaving those front two wires together and I'll be using basically the same weave as I used for the bale. So I'm continuing down with two wraps on that inside wire. It's a little bit tight at the top there. Then up through the centre between the two wires and take two wraps on the outside wire. And I'm just going to continue with two wraps on each of the wires until that curve starts kicking in. And I'll show you how you can see when that's happening. Now I've woven along a little bit further and hopefully you can see that now when I try to take the weaving wire over to the outside edge I've got a little bit of a gap forming. This is because the outside wire is longer than the inside wire is. So I need to put some extra wraps on the outside wire to compensate. So I'm going to start going around the outside wire three times. I'm going to leave the wraps on the inside wire at two times around. And I'm just going to continue around this curve in the same way, checking how many wraps I need as I go. I might just need the three wraps on the outside for every two on the inside wire. Or I might need to go up to four wraps. This depends entirely on the curve that you've created, so you just need to judge it by eye as you go. Now I've woven around that curve to where the two wires are meeting again, and I'm just going to continue weaving a little bit further along those two frame wires with two wraps on the top wire and then through and two wraps on the bottom wire. Now those two woven wires are going to wrap right the way round the centre wire. But first of all, I need to move that centre wire so it's running straight down the pendant. So I'm just going to pop in my flat nose pliers to hold it into position. And create the bend. So it's running vertically. Now I want my woven wires to come from behind that centre wire, so I just need to swap them round. And then I can just check and adjust that curve to make sure it's how I want it. And put that centre wire back down vertical. I'm then going to continue the weave on those two wires so I've got enough to wrap around that centre wire. And it's still the two wraps on the top wire and two wraps on the bottom. 
and then I'm going to hold where all of those curves are and just carefully bend that piece of weaving around that centre wire. Just checking as I go to make sure that centre wire hasn't distorted and it's still running vertical. And then take those two woven wires right the way around that centre wire so that they're coming back around on the left. The last thing to do at the top of the pendant is to sort out that final wire coming from the bale. And I'm going to take the weaving wire end that I left right at the beginning I'm just going to coil that last base wire with the weaving wire. I then want that coiled wire to bend round on the left hand side just to mirror the right hand side a bit. Now eventually I'm going to put a bit of a loop on the end of that and I'll anchor it in but I'm going to leave it for now in case I need to make any adjustments as I go. So that's the top of the pendant complete and we're ready to add our focal bead. Just to give you a little bit of a guide, the work we've done so far measures just under three centimetres, which is just under an inch and a quarter. And we're now ready to add the bead. So I'm just going to pop it on to that centre wire and take it right the way up to the wire work that we've already completed. And then I want to bend the two wires that we've been weaving with around the bead. The inside wire will hug the bead. And as before, I want the space between the two wires to be increasing and then decreasing back together again. And I'll take my time to adjust that curve till I get it how I want it. And then I'm ready to start weaving that curve. And I'm just going to weave exactly the same as I did on the curve previously. So weaving around the inside wire twice and then the outside wire as many times as I need just to keep it neat. And once I've weaved that curve, I'm going to take that weaving around the centre wire in the same way as I did before. And then I'm ready to shape the wires at the bottom. So first I'm going to take that centre wire and make a small curve in exactly the same way as I did right at the top of the pendant. I'll then mirror that with the inside wire on the other side. I can then follow that wire with the other one of the pair, creating another curve to weave just as I've done previously. And then I'll weave around that curve exactly as I've done previously. And once I get to where the wires cross, this time I'm going to take that weaving wire around that back wire and just catch it in that way. You can take it round a couple of times just to make sure it's secure. Then I'll coil three times around the topmost of those two base wires that I've been weaving. That will secure the weaving wire because that will be the last bit of weaving that we do. Then I'm going to create a small loop on that topmost wire. Trim it and make sure it's flat and not sticking out of the pendant. I'm then going to finish off that top wire and I first want to take the weaving wire that we coiled that wire with, take it through some of the weaving next to it just to secure it in. I'll then coil that three or four times, create the little loop and trim and finish that in the same way as I did the loop below. I've then got those bottom two wires to finish and for this pendant I'm going to trim them and then hammer those ends. I've got a small riveting hammer here which is ideal but you could use a larger hammer just be careful not to hit where the weaving is. OK 
can then make some final adjustments to those ends. And it's worth thinking about this pendant in three dimensions. So I'm just going to carefully take that weaving that's running around the side and just twist it a little bit. Just to make it look a little bit prettier on the side as well as from the front. I'll do the other bits of weaving in the same way. And then the pendant's finished and ready to patina. I hope you enjoyed the video and it's inspired you to make some jewellery with your own special beads. If so, please press the like button below. And don't forget, you can subscribe to my channel, head over to my website for more hints, tips and projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.